What's up guys? This is a review of the Sharp FX from AT&T. They're not available with this phone anymore unless they come out with a refurbished device. But I'm pretty sure you can get it from eBay or Craigslist. Anyways, here's the Sharp FX. I've been having this phone since November 2010, so it's been a year. Upgrading from a Samsung Propel. See, it's in the dust. Buttons kind of broke, so they didn't work anymore. Anyways, here's the phone right here. So, three inch display, three physical keys down here send and back key and multitasking key, a light sensor right there and a microphone right there on the top you got an earpiece on the left you got a volume rocker and a mini USB charging port which you open like that and close it just by pushing it and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the back you got a 2 megapixel camera and the speakerphone and a lanyard holder and on the right side you got the lock key, the lock phone and the dedicated camera key and when you open up the phone here's a 4 row QWERTY keyboard right there and by the way this skin is the SF Giants World Champions 2010 skin got from skinit.com really good website to purchase these skin phone things <laughs> but yeah turning on the phone you got you're introduced to four menu keys so phone call anybody you want call options clear second is a address book get all your contacts there is a messaging for this, you can customize actually what you want this third row to be. So I chose it as messaging. Yep, right there. And fourth row is the menu key. So it takes you to the menu wherever you want to go. Anyways, so this one's really good for messaging. So we'll go to the messaging. And right here, so this is your messages and here's a text so it of course it's threaded text messaging so where the the ones texting is us is the purple one and your friend would be the light bluish color one and that's how it looks like and when you want to reply you go to a different place and you just type your message. So here's your message and this is for two. And add media, you add pictures, video, audio, options, and these are your send key. Anyway, going back again, let's try and go to the mobile web. Pretty much it loads fast for me when I'm during when I'm in school or in the library and if I just want to check out some websites like that. They're okay. Yep, see that didn't take that long. So I'll go to YouTube for example. And I'll just search a random video like um, check one of these videos. Check a random video. There you have video quality for normal and HQ. HQ usually takes, it's always buffering actually, and sometimes it lags a lot, so it's it looks weird. Normal will just be normal quality, although screen will be more smaller like for example see 
kind of peeny, you can't even like see that. <laughs> oh shoot, click the weird video. <laughs> Go back, we'll try HQ, which stands for high quality. Watch video. There we go, it looks better, way much better. See the whole thing. I chose the wrong video, gosh. And you can act, kind of extend it to the fullest. If that looks better, sometimes it looks really pixelated depending on the video, but HQ makes it look really nice, so it's really, it makes it really nice for videos, and they don't tend to load very slow. Sometimes it buffers, but that's really okay. It still looks good. So over this phone, let's go take a look at it. Here's your menu, music, address book, then to the left side, Facebook, email, I am, all those to the right side, settings, calendar, sound profile, Bluetooth, camera, calculator, etc. Yep. We'll go look at the music player. Go to all music, and here's all my music. It even includes my ringtones. And I'll just play a random song, Chris Brown. I think this good, like, speaker really plays it really well. And when you put it loud enough, it's decent to hear, you know? I use this phone to practice for my dances. It's pretty loud and good enough. I could hear very well. Music. Um, the music menu looks basic, ordinary, nothing special. You got rewind, forward, pause, play, mute, all, repeat, etc. Shuffle. Uh, and done with that. Nothing special. And let's see. Applications. Of course, you got all the AT&T preloaded applications: radio, social net, some messaging, loot, mobile banking, mobile web, where, and some of the apps that I installed, such as Google Maps, Snaptune. I all got this from Getchar, so yeah, Twitter, Google, YouTube, Yahoo Mail, Movie Night Out, Foursquare, Bolt, all these stuff from Getchar. The good thing about this phone, like, they really load apps very well, so let's try and gadget. Most of these apps open the mobile version of the website, so here's Engadget, for example, play. And I've gotten it unlimited data plan for 10 bucks a month so I can get this yes and it opens up the browser yep loading right there and it takes me to Engadget the mobile version of Engadget right there yep not bad Accept that. Back here. And dedicated Facebook 2. Opens the mobile web version also. Really not that bad. It's actually great. And got that. Settings. There's not much personalization here. So let's see. Display. So you can change your wall pipe. Wallpaper, style, so looking at that, style, nothing that awesome. 
and greeting banner, backlight theme can only be black or white. Alarm clock, tools such as to-do list, world time, notepad, unit converter, voice memo, stopwatch, sound profile, you can customize ringtone, message tone, volume, all those stuff. Mobile TV does not work anymore for some reason. I guess they canceled the service. AT&T GPS it works fine also. Paying 10 bucks a month, actually 9.99 a month for it. App Center totally useless though. Nah. And that's pretty much it. This is, this is a good phone. Well, oh, the camera too. Camera is okay. Only under like best lighting conditions, but when it's really dark, of course it's bad. And video is below average, not that great. And yeah, this is the review of the Sharp FX. If you have any questions, just comment on the bottom right there. Thank you. Oh. Overall, this phone is not really that bad. I got it when it came out. Uh, it was a 99 contract for a two-year contract, then it lowered down to 69.99, which I got the price for, 69.99. And then it got free, then it's been discontinued. But yeah, uh, this phone's really good on battery, like with minimal use, just texting and calling will get you like one and a half days. Minimal use with browser, like with going on the mobile web and such will make you charge it every day and like heavy use with everything all together would need you to charge it like halfway through the day like that but yeah it's a really good phone overall I recommend it for people who just want to text message most of the time I'd say calling quality is awesome too it's not that really bad as people will say but it just depends on service and the other person's phone who you're talking to. And yep, it's pretty good, I'd say. But if you're more of a tech geek and like wanting like more of a smartphone, I would not recommend this phone. It's only good for average users. Because it doesn't do that much, it just gets what you need to do, such as texting, checking your social networking sites, and such. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty good phone. Just download, make it personalized for yourself, download the apps you need, and you'll be good to go. It's a really good phone. I really recommend it if you're looking for a good messaging phone from AT&T. <laughs> yeah, thank you.